Okay traders, welcome back to the Price Action Labs YouTube. So we've had a bit of a rebrand. We are now Price Action Labs. Welcome everyone to Price Action Labs and I'm looking forward to seeing what this channel can bring everyone, right? So again, welcome back. This is the S&P 500. Now we start on the four hour time frame. What are we looking at, right? So again, nothing has changed from Liquid FX going on to Price Action Labs. So what we're looking at over here is a bearish structural dealing range, right? So we have a structural high up here and we have a structural low down here. And our job is to use the Fibonacci to two hour advantage to understand the dealing range. So we have a dealing range high and we have a dealing range low. So we're using the Fib tool just like this to project our premium and discount arrays. Right. So now from here, where are our fair value gaps? So notice how we've come from a discount and we're now heading to a premium. So the overall narrative going into the week ahead was to buy. So it was a bullish bias. And the reason for that was that we have a fair value gap over here. We have an inefficiency over here, right? And that leads us to a POI in the premium above the 50% level. So this is what gives us our overall narrative to looking for buys, right? This is what gave us our bullish week ahead. So now if we head down to the 15 minute time frame, we can begin to understand. So I'm going to be breaking down two trades from Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, two potential trades you could have taken, right? So we're starting here with the Tuesday. So this is the Asian session range. To give some context, Monday gave, did give some nice buy trades with a buy trade coming up from here and a sell trade on the lower time frame from here, right? So this was the most recent supply that price was reacting on on Monday, right? So if I just play price on, we see the London session now beginning to rip through that supply zone. Now, this is what I want to bring to people's attention, right? What we see over here is a two-phase manipulation. This is a two-phase manipulation. So we have the Asian session range. And we have the opening price of that day. So this is the opening price of the day. And notice how this gives us a very clear manipulation of price, right? So again, two-phase manipulation. So we see early buyers. This is an enticement of early buyers. So something I call, or I refer to as manipulation phase one. Then we see manipulation phase two down here, right? So phase one, phase two. So this is an enticement of early buyers, enticement of sellers. Both of them get trapped out. And now from here, we see the supply zone to the left that ultimately fails. So if I just keep playing on price, we see a failure of the supply. So the supply has now been violated. And so this gives us our demand zone. So I actually had two demand zones, which is now very important to understand. I had a demand zone down here. So there was a fair value gap region down here. This is one key level or a POI or a point of interest, right? And the second key level was just over here. So this was now at 2.15, 2.30 p.m. UK time. So that's about 9.30 Eastern time, right? So now from here, if I head down to the five minute time frame, right now, the five minute time frame is where we need to start understanding things, right? Or sorry, the one minute time frame. So no, we have our points of interest down here. We have a POI here and a POI here. So our job now is to assess how price action behaves when we get into this particular level. And this is where footprint charts and understanding order flow comes into the market. So if I continue to play price on, we see our first mitigation at 19 past, sorry, 18 past 10. Eastern Standard Time. So 1018, we see price mitigating into this zone over here, right? And now if I continue to play price on again, we see a second deeper mitigation. And so we're going to be going over a few concepts. Now, to understand things, there's going to be a few things I want traders to understand, right? We and I've made a separate video on this. We need to understand who is aggressive and who is passive. And I'm going to be explaining all of this on the footprint chart. Who is aggressive and who is passive? That's the first thing to understand. The second thing we understand from that is the delta. Now, the delta directly relates to who is aggressive, right? These are aggressors. Aggressive, right? So we're going to be going over this uh, very shortly on the footprint chart. So we want to see who is aggressive, who is passive. Once we have that in place, if I can quickly spell aggressive, once we have that in place, we then want to be looking at volume profiles. And on top of that, we want to be understanding auctions, right? We want to be standing, we want to understand the interaction between buyers and sellers. And to actually achieve this, I'm now going to pull up what we call the footprint chart. So this is now the footprint chart. So to give people some context, this is the same exact chart on the fifth on the five minute time frame, right? So it's the same exact chart. We see the supply zone get broken. We see all the supply zone get broken, right? So this is the 8.30 Eastern time, this large candle over here, this is the 8.30 Eastern time. This is the news event we had on that day. There was some economic data that was being released. So now when we understand the order flow of this, of, you know, of the market at that time, what we can see is a few things from this candle without even looking at the numbers. What we see is we see majority of the aggressors here were in fact 
aggressive buyers, which is very important to understand. So we see majority aggressive buyers. We also see the volume of the candle situated in the upper half of the candle. Now, this is something very important. So if we look at the candle just in its raw kind of raw position, if you like, right? When we look at the candle like this, we see a massive wick over here. We see a pretty large wick over here. We see a kind of a middle-ish volume. With that candle, you can't actually depict the overall order flow that the markets was actually um, undergoing at that time. But when we dive into the markets, it's when we dive into the candle itself, what you can see is majority of the volume was situated above the body of the candle. And most of the actual aggressors in the market for that news event were aggressive buyers. Important to understand, right? So we see not we see basically no volume at the bottom of the candle. When, when we when we see no volume, it rep it actually represents a lack of interest for prices, for lower prices for that candle, right? So from here now, if we just play price on, or not even play price on, what we understand over here is that this is now a very important. We had a bit of a fair value gap from the news event. Now, when price comes back into this fair value gap, this is where things get very interesting, right? We begin to understand things in a very interesting way, right? So we have a red candle over here. This is now the red candle that came back into that fair value gap. So it's this red candle over here. But when we zoom into the markets and we understand things in terms of the order flow and the auction and the interaction between buyers and sellers, it's very interesting that the majority of the candle, the volume of the candle, the majority of it was situated at the bottom. So there was a lot of trading. There was a lot of transactions. The majority of the transactions occurred between buyers and sellers, right? Now, if we understand who was aggressive and who was passive when price came back into that fair value gap candle, we see that the delta is red, right? So we see green and we see red. The majority here is red. So what does that mean? I made a previous video on this. But when we see red on the delta profile footprint, what that's indicating to us is that there's more aggressive sellers. So we have more essentially market participants hitting the bid compared to the ask, right? So the left number is higher than the right number. And that represents aggressive selling. That represents aggressive selling. So when we come into this zone over here and we look at the five minute chart, Notice how the major this fair value gap over here was filled, right? This fair value gap was filled just before market opened, just over here, right? So when you see lots of aggressive sellers going into a buy candle, just like this, we see a lot of aggressive sellers coming down this way. When you see aggressive sellers that are not being rewarded, in fact, price has done the opposite. What this tells us is that we have potential strong areas of demand. So that shows us that the buyers are in control. Now, if the buyers are in control, you want to be, you know, buying. You want to be buying in line with them, right? So if the sellers are in control, you don't want to be buying, right? Because you're essentially swimming against the tide. You're quote unquote going against the trend. But this is a lot more than just the trend, right? So it's essentially validating who is in control. Is the buyers in control or is the sellers in control, right? And we use delta foot, we use delta volume auctions. We use the interaction between the two market participants, the buyers and sellers, to understand who is in control of the price. So now that we've come into somewhat of a demand area with aggressive selling, right? The aggressive selling, as we can see, has not been rewarded as we come into higher prices, right? This tells us that we have passive buyers sitting at this level. So we have passive buyers stepping in, right? So imagine this, right? I want people to understand this. Lots of aggressive selling coming down, 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 down. If they're not being rewarded, at this point, there's passive buyers pushing the market up. And we want to be in line with the passive participants, right? Not who's necessarily aggressive. So now from here, when we see the new demand zone get broken, again, this was market open. This was now 9.30 Eastern time. Look at this candle. This candle is pretty obvious. Now, the volume isn't massive. The volume is you know, just evenly distributed along the actual candle. But here we have majority aggressive buying. All this candle here was aggressive buying, right? Now, Coming into this zone, we had the majority of interest at the upper end of the candle, right? Upper end of the candle. So what's that sh What's that showing us is that we see volume drying up towards the bottom of the candle, towards the bottom of the candle, towards the bottom of the candle, right? So that's showing a lack of interest for lower prices respective to each candle, right? So this gives us indication for higher prices, right? Volume is low at lower prices. Aggressive buyers stepping in, aggressive sellers not being rewarded, they're being absorbed by passive buyers. 
So now from here, if we just understand we have two drives into this POI, this key level. And so I want people to understand this from a five minute perspective, right? We had two drives. Now from here, we understand that the, the majority of the volume was situated towards the bottom end of the candle, kind of even, but towards the bottom end. So our first drive into the zone was essentially what we see is aggressive selling over here. See the delta was negative. If we quickly understand the auction, what we're seeing over here is 24 for zero, 49 for 52. So what this represents to us is that there's more aggressive sellers than there are buyers. And we see a lot of aggressive, we see primarily the aggressive participants are those sellers coming into the market over here, right? What's interesting is as we tap in, aggressive buyers step in, right? Now, this is what I want people to understand, the exhaustion move, right? This is the exhaustion move, right? So if I were to bring this back to the charts themselves, what we're looking at is an exhaustion, right? So this is our exhaustion move over here. When we see price coming in and giving that V-shaped recovery, so we see price coming in, giving us this aggressive move down before an aggressive move up, this corresponds to this move over here, right? So again, what we see is we see a very large amount of volume. So we see a high number of transactions coming into the zone. Notice how aggressive the selling is over here. We see red delta, red delta. We see all red deltas coming down. We see 73 for zero. So what you need to understand is that we see 73 market participants hitting the bid and we see no market participants hitting the ask so we're seeing an imbalance right we're seeing essentially a lot more aggressive sellers right so if we go back to the charts bearing in mind this is a demand zone over here if i were to zoom out this is a demand zone so if we're seeing lots of aggressive sellers coming into the demand zone but the market isn't going down they're not being rewarded if anything price is now going higher what does this tell you about the quality of this demand zone? Think about aggressive versus passive. Think about the delta, the volume, and the auctions, right? So the auctions is, is essentially telling us who is aggressive, who is passive, and by how much. The delta and the aggressive participants all kind of feed into that. and The volume shows us the interest, right? So if we go back to the volume, we had a very large interest over here, right? A lot of transactions over here. And before here, as we as we now start to come up, we see aggressive buyers kick in, aggressive buyers kick in, right? Aggressive buying. We see a lot of aggressive buying kick in, right? But I want people to understand that when we come into a demand zone and we see aggressive sellers not being rewarded, this is this essentially validates this demand zone, right? This is a valid demand zone, right? This is a valid demand zone, right? And the reason why it's valid is because we see passive, we see passive buyers step in, right? passive buyers step in and that's also illustrated very nicely on the footprint chart because on the footprint chart we see aggressive buyers kick in just afterwards right we see a lot of aggressive buyers do dark green we see a lot of aggressive buyers step in right so this validates our key level and once you have your key level validated in place a good entry you could potentially take is you want to enter off just the high over here stop loss just below that exhaustion move or you can have it slightly lower right so this is a good area to essentially enter once your demand zone has been validated, right? And again, the overall market sentiment, if we go back to the four hour, our overall narrative was all the way up here at 55.26 level, right? So if we go down to the one minute, 55.26 was ultimately our key level. So if we type that in over here, so that's 55.26. Now, one thing I will say is make sure you take partial along the way. You don't want to keep holding your trades all the way for that long because this was a crazy multiple one to 10 hour trade, right? But Again, it shows you the power of a higher time frame bias, but also understanding your overall entries, right? So when price does eventually tap us in, this trade did eventually run all the way there. So it was a very high kind of RR trade. But it's based off the analysis that, you know, we've just performed, right? Understanding which uh, markets, are, <coughs> understand, sorry, which zones are effectively bullish and then buying off them. So it's understanding and using the order flow that's very important. So if I just speed this up, Right, we understand how powerful this actually is, right? Because we see price respecting our zone quite nicely, actually. We see price respecting our zone, right? So, again, to sum up the video, when we come into a demand zone, just like this, when we come into a valid demand zone, what are we looking for? We want to see who is aggressive and who is passive, right? I'm just going to write who is aggressive, AGG, versus who is passive. That's the first thing. The second thing we want to look at is the delta, 
the delta gives you a direct indication of who is aggressive in the markets, right? We want to understand where our key levels are. Don't forget, we need to do this at key levels. And then we also want to look at shifts of volume, right? Where's the volume high? Where's the volume low? Understand the interest of certain prices. And the last thing we want to look at is auctions, right? Understanding the actual numbers, finished versus unfinished. Whose auction is finished? Where is it finished and why is it finished? And what does that tell us in terms of who is aggressive, who is passive? And all of this tells you one thing, right? And I want people to leave this video with this. Who is in control of the market, right? Is it the buyers or the sellers, right? So whoever's in control, just jump on that bandwagon and allow your trades to play out accordingly.